1980. Daytona 500 waving like mad as he crosses the line. Buddy Baker has done it, but not without a heart stopper just at the finish as the caution came out. Buddy Baker has pulled it off. 200 laps completed. Waiting for the time. For the seventh time, Bobby Allison. A sort of win situation. The sort of strategy he pulled here is like sinking about a 90-foot putt to win the uh, U.S. Open by one hole. Out of turn number four, Richard Petty holding on to that lead like a hammerhead shark. Here he comes, coming down, seeking out. And is he slowing down? Is he running out of fuel? He's coming across the line slowly, but he takes the checkered flag. has crashed just at the finish. Number 22, Barrett, has walled his automobile. Richard Petty has won it right at the finish. Stan Barrett has crashed car number 22. He's all the way up against the wall in turn number four, coming right down by our camera, holding it up there on the wall. He was running in 10th position. I think we got it now. Well, less than a half ago, Ken, how's he doing? Looking good. He's pulling up on car number two, trying to put the Rutland car a lap down in the final moments. Here it comes. A sprint to the finish. Allison coming down. And he's right behind Rutland as they come to the line. Down the checkered flag about to come out. And sprinting to it is number 88. Bobby Allison has won the Daytona 500 for the second time in his career a little as he came across second place number 27 Cale Yarborough twice a winner of the 500 and the terror of Timmonsville fighting that steering wheel right to the finish line Cale Yarborough for second spot Gary Ballou right behind him out of the top 10 as they come to the line the third position will go to car number two our in-car camera machine being shown as third. What a race he's driven. There we see him coming off turn four. Coming down to take the checkered flag. You're with Joe Rutman. Now you're back to number 88, Bobby Allison, as he circulates around the track and takes a deep breath. Well, Yarborough has one thing on his mind right now to take that shot. They're in the back straightaway. Here comes Yarborough to the inside. Identical to 1979. Baker gives him room and going into first goes Cale Yarborough. Yarborough's taking the lead. Looking back, there's 98 Joe Rutman into second place. Rutman's going high and here comes Cale trying to throw the block. He Buddy gets Baker's up there. going under Rutman again as they come off four. Down they come to the finish. Here comes Baker on the outside. Oh, only in three oh, cars side by side fighting at the line. to the outside. Back straight away, final time. Down to the inside. The move he loves. Here he comes up to the inside. It is Cale Yarborough taking first as they get into turn number three, coming for four. Down to the inside. Here comes Earnhardt. Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying for second. Bonnet trying to find a place to run. They're coming to the finish line. At the line, it is He's done it again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Taylor crossing the line, winning back to back as the first man since the late Fireball Roberts to win a Daytona Triple Crown. Battle will be Waltrip, Baker, Rutt outside that third position. There's Lake Speed right there. In the second position, Bill Elliott is on his way to his greatest race ever. A little looseness up at turn number three. A couple of cars all the way sideways. Here they are, coming back to the line. And after dominating all day, his crew out on pit road, Bill Elliott wins the 1985 Daytona 500. There you see Ernie Elliott. Dan Elliott stands there just to the left. What a sensation, Ned. That's his fuel gauge. His fuel gauge is the one on the right. See that little gauge? It's flickering on the right-hand side of the dashboard of the F-100. 
I'm sure that's probably his fuel gauge and pressure gauge, which at the moment doesn't see, the, uh, see it flickering there. It goes out the flickering when it goes into the turn. And it goes into the turn. He's getting mighty close. See the, the needle's going down now. You're riding down for the finish. Checkered flag is out, and you are with Jeff Bodine as he wins the 1986 Daytona 500. Bodine has done it. CBS camera on board. The Rick Hendrick Racing Stable out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Jeff Bodine from Chamon, New York has won the Daytona 500 for Ned Jarrett, David Hobbs, Mike Joy, and Chris Economaki. I'm Ken Squire. Here they are for turn number three. Parsons still trying to close. Final lap. Last sprint out of turn number four. The pride of Georgia, Bill Elliott, screening car number nine to bring it home and give Ford and give the folks from Georgia something to cheer about. He comes across the line to win it by about ten car lengths. Bill Elliott, two-time winner of the Great American Race. Second place with a great performance, Benny Parsons, and third to the king, Richard Petty. Now, Davey, what are you going to do? He's got less than half a lap to do it. And they have enough lead, and I believe this is going to be a battle between the father and son. I don't think anybody Davey. else can try it, but here he comes. He's going to do the it. bottom. He's down low. Bobby Allison high. Davey Allison trying the inside move. Bobby Allison holds him off. They come to the stripe, and the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race, Bobby Allison. Davey Allison, his son in second. Judy Allison is static. What a tremendous family performance. Look at him, David. Bobby waving to Davey. <laughs> it's a question of fuel. Can Waltrip hold out? He could have coasted now, I think. Yeah, he's about close enough now that he could coast across the start finish line and still win. Out of turn four, after 17 years of effort, the Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. He's done it. Second place at stake to the line. Number 25. Schrader will take second. Seven seconds back, almost eight. And right behind him comes Dale Earnhardt. What's going to happen? Maybe. I thought Terry Labonte was going to try to move down and take over second place, and if he does, that'll just open it up for Earnhardt to move away. We'll see. Uh, naturally, every one of them wants to gain a position, whether it's uh, for from fourth to third or whatever, but it, if they do get side by side, it'll help Earnhardt. This is the half a lap to go. Four-car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coke down on the inside. Oh, Earnhardt has Earnhardt problems. Earnhardt slopping back. Something is amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope. Something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line. It's Labonte pulling up. And an amazing finish. The Whitcomb Racing Team has won it. Unbelievable. Earnhardt had a tire go down maybe as he went into the turn. And Nicole crying a little bit. Brent Cope's first top five finish, his first victory, comes in the Daytona 500. Earnhardt is in fifth position. Six is Dale Jarrett. Rick Mast is going to finish this race in fourth. Ernie Irvin coming to the line and will win the 33rd annual 500 at about 55 miles an hour thank you hand out and waving Irvin in this surprising unbelievable finish to the 500 as Earnhardt and Allison get tangled up Kyle Petty on the back straightaway three laps to go Davey Allison has said that the greatest moment in his career was when he finished second to his dad here in 1988. He won 11 races since then, and he's always said that was the finest moment. Perhaps this equals that moment. 135,000 people standing in the infield in all these 97,000 plus seats outside, ready to give an ovation to Allison. The new member of the Alabama gang, Neil, he sure looked good today. 
Yeah, I tell you what, I'm glad to see him run like this. It's been a good day for me in racing to see the Wood Brothers run as well as they did. And boy, Davey really brought it home today. So here's Davey Allison's car rolling down for the most important victory that it has ever scored, Ned. No question about that. This is, as has been said so many times, the Super Bowl of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Two points, almost two and a half million dollars in prize money. Wow. They've asked him to compare his driving style with his father, and he has said, I, I, I really don't classify my driving style. I don't know. I guess it'd be easier to observe from the outside. All right, come on. I know he's got it to the floorboard. He can't do any more. Come on, take her to the inside. Don't let him get on the inside of you coming around this turn.